The Razer Black Shark V2 Pro 2023 feels very light but structurally high quality. These use an almost identical look of the regular Black Shark V2 and V2 Pro, and these have a really high quality feeling headband with a nice soft plush leatherette on top, and the cushion is thick and comfy using a cloth that feels super good in a foam that gives way to a lot of cushion on the head. And these use the same design with the prong style yokes and plastic attachments that doesn't hold its position well at all, and I worry about the plastic breaking, it doesn't feel very strong like the rest of the headset and even comparing it to the regular black shark v2 i feel like the plastic just doesn't feel as strong there these are light 320 grams that's it and a bonus is the controls are on the headset there's the volume knob an eq button and a mic mute and they're using what they're calling the pressure relieving memory foam for the ear pads and there's a soft padding inside the ear cup build quality and design i think these are still among the best looking and best quality you'll find in the gaming headset world they're light and strong i just worry a bit about that prong plastic breaking and i don't like that it doesn't hold its position well the comfort wise these are really good but they do have a small flaw however the plush and thick ear cushions are soft on the skin and the padding inside is great on the ears. The clamping force is weird. It's strong but it's not tight. It's very unique and it's not overbearing. It doesn't feel like it's like squeezing your head but at the same time it feels nice and tight and secure. My ears do touch the drivers but because of the padding inside being so thick it actually doesn't bother me too much. Unlike most headsets, my ears touching the driver can become a problem, but I can see some people even with these, it bothering them. Due to the weight, I get zero pressure on the crown of my head. Now that flaw that I was talking about, right here under my ear, I get this weird pressure and I have to adjust the headset a little bit to alleviate that pressure. And over time, it starts to really bother me, but it's not a deal breaker. So comfort wise, I do think that these are really great and they would have almost been perfect if not for that pressure below my ears. So. I don't normally give numbers, but seven out of 10 comfort. Now, like I always say, I don't like to bore you guys with the specs, but I like to let you know what's going on. These are using Razer's really dope 50 millimeter titanium Triforce dynamic drivers, that's a mouthful, which is meant to give space for each range of frequencies, the highs, the mids, and the lows, which is supposed to give way to more clarity and definition to the audio, and we will discuss it more in the sound section. These do have a removable mic, which is a unidirectional microphone. These are wireless using Razer's Hyperspeed 2.4 gigahertz technology, and it's through a USB-A dongle. They do have a huge 70 hour battery life, which I only had to charge these once in the week and a half I've been using these. These also support Bluetooth, but not simultaneous 2.4 and Bluetooth. That's a big difference. One feature I think is really clutch for a lot of people is the three presets that you can quickly swap between on the headphone and you don't need the software to use it and I have tested it. You can swap on the console because it is on the headset. Razer's awful Synapse opens up a huge variety of functions like an 8-band EQ, side tone, THX spatial sound, mic settings, and more. Mic test. You are now here in the Razer Black Shark V2 Pro 2023 model microphone. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. I think this is a pretty damn good microphone. I just want to shout out the members right here. They help out the channel a ton, and you can become a member as low as $2 a month. And if you're interested in anything we talk about today, you can check out the affiliate links down below. I do greatly appreciate it. Also, a like on the video helps out a ton. Anyway, guys, back to the video. That's how the mic sounds. It's actually really freaking awesome good. These are a very warm sounding headset with a decent sound stage. Now the highs, they're good, but they are a bit pushed back and we are going to discuss that a tiny bit more in a minute. However, these have a huge and impactful sound when playing shooters or games like Destiny with abilities popping off, gunshots ramping up, and enemies swarming the area. However, in Destiny PvP, I did struggle a little to sound out the direction the enemy was coming from. I do think that the footsteps are good enough, which I found to be true in more competitive FPS games, but I wouldn't say that they were the best I've ever tried for competitive play. Open world games, however, benefit greatly from this headset. Voices have a satisfying warmth to them, and I did really like how Elder Scrolls Online sounded on these, but then when I switched back to the Bear Dynamics, it does kind of show that I am actually losing some of the environmental detail, but it's not a huge difference. I do think that the audio separation is pretty good, but it's not perfect. Like I said earlier, the highs can come off veiled and can sometimes get overwhelmed when too many lower end sounds are happening. It's not so much in the super highs, but the high mids and low highs section of the sound. So basically sound wise, these are pretty good, but I don't know, I'm having a hard time with these costing $200. Like yes, these sound pretty damn good, 
but it has flaws. I do think these sound like a $150 headset. I do think that the value lies more in the tech part of the headset with the presets and the headphones and the extensive software features. But even knowing all that, I don't think 200 is a fair price. I'd like to meet them in the middle at like 170 or, or 180, but I don't think that you would feel like you didn't get your money's worth because these are a really good headset, great sound, great features. I do hate Synapse, but that's a personal preference. However, if you're not into Razer and you want a wireless headset, why don't you check out my review right here of the SteelSeries Arctis Nova 7s. Pretty dope headset. And also down in the description, I'll leave my review for the wireless Corsair HS80 if you're interested in that. Anyway, guys, have a good one. Peace out.